Hello, everybody, and welcome to uh, the first office hours of 2024. Um, we have a really exciting topic for you, which is the message context menu changes that are available in daily and will be available in the next ESR. And we have um, Elizabeth here to kind of walk us through what that looks like and, um, you know, kind of the process behind the design of, of the new context menu um, and all the information around that. Um, we also have Monica and Jason and Natalie here um, from the community team and Roland and Sol from you know other areas of NCLA. It's nice to see some uh, other folks here. Uh, yeah, so Elizabeth, do you wanna maybe introduce yourself a little bit more and um, take it away? Yes, uh, sure. Um, it's so good to, you know, to see everyone here and just that people are here in this in community with us. So excited to share about uh, the message context menu. So let me, let me, okay, so I have, I'm going to share these slides in case you're someone who um, would rather follow along um, on your screen rather than like me sharing my screen. So these uh, slides should be available uh, to view. So I'm gonna go share that and then I'm going to, Okay, the link is in the chat there for anybody following along. And we can also put a PDF of these slides available alongside the um, recording. Um, so I'm excited to share with you today. Um, I, sorry, I'm sorry to I'm sorry to bump into you, Elizabeth. I just wanted to add that um, after her presentation, we'll um, have a quick discussion and then we'll have some time probably towards the last third of the hour to take any of your questions. Yeah, that's a good And if point. you wanna ask them now, uh, ask your questions in chat and I'll make sure to get them to the team. Yeah, th thanks a lot, Jason, for pointing that out. Please think of questions and ask them. Um, and you all can see the, the yes. presentation. Okay, great. Um, all right. So um, a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Elizabeth Mitchell. I joined MZLA in September of 2022. And I'm from the Detroit, Michigan area in the United States. Uh, I'm a senior UX developer. And the work I do is front end development, the things you see and interact with um, inside the application, uh, user experience, uh, design in general and accessibility, and my pronouns are they and she. So today we're going to be talking about the message context menu, um, and some of the things we'll be talking about is why we wanted to change it, what the design process looked like for that, uh, talk about the proposed design, and then talk about the community feedback we've received since then, and then what's next. And there's plenty of time for questions. Plenty and of feedback. time for questions. Oh, Steven, could you mute? We oh, hear some Steven, feedback. Yeah, we hear some feedback. All right. So if you're trying to figure out, like, what is the message context menu, um, I think it might be helpful to, like, have some context. So uh, <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do more of a one second. There we go. Uh, perfect. Okay, so this is uh, inside today's most recent uh, Thunderbird. Um, and if I right click on a message, I get a context menu. Um, and so this is the context menu that we're talking about. And as you can see, the current context menu has a lot of different options, um, very powerful, a lot going on there, um, many things. A lot of people use inside of here, move to, um, copy, tag. Those are some of the very um, common things people use. Definitely reply. So a lot of powerful actions for messages um, are inside this context menu. So that's in 115, the current ESR, right? 
Uh, this is it's in one fifteen. The current ESR. This is actually daily. So right this now, is daily. Okay. yeah. So we haven't um, done the development yet for this. Uh, oh, we okay. actually, one of our community developers, I think, is here. Uh, is Richard here? Uh, yes. Um, uh, our community developer is uh, has started working on this. Um, so we actually have like a um, a draft of like what this will look like, um, which we're excited about. But we haven't. Um, it's not in daily yet. Uh, we haven't like planned out fully the development, but it's in process in terms of like where we're going with it. So I like talk gotcha. more about like where we're at in the in the process for this. Um, so that's what's in daily today is this current menu that we're we're wanting to uh, we're wanting to improve. Okay, go back to there we go. Okay, so. Some of the things that we, so we thought about what we have right now and the current menu has a lot of options and the current menu could be visually overwhelming. So those are the places where we thought that there'd be room for improvement. And we've um, received like, uh, this is definitely affirmed by um, in Bugzilla, like people have like posted, uh, um, there's like an, a community member posted and was like our context menus, we could really clean these up. And so like we've, um, definitely gotten feedback from the community over time that things could be improved. So we wanted to um, like move it forward. How could we move this forward? So um, our goals were to make the context menu easier to find, um, whatever you need to find it quickly um, inside that menu, and then to make it easy to find the most used actions and to try to reduce overwhelm and confusion because we have a lot of options going on. So. The design process for this, uh, something in the last uh, community office hours, Micah mentioned that in terms of what our design process is for a project, um, first we'll like consider a feature and evaluate its current strengths and its rooms for improvement. And then we'll think about concrete ways we can make those improvements. And usually we have like a lot of discussions, a lot of drafting of what these changes might look like. Um, and just we like keep um, keep trying to improve it until it gets to a good point. Um, and then when we're happy with those proposed changes, we share those uh, changes with the community for feedback. So for the message context menu, um, we thought about what content is already in the menu. So we made a list of existing items in the menu um and there's like so many things inside the message context menu and some of it depends on context so some options appear and disappear depending on what's going on with a particular message so we tried to capture all of it um in terms of like what we included in the menu but all those items would remain we're not trying to get rid of anything we're just trying to find a way to organize it better um and then we thought about like could these items be grouped together better and we just tried out different groupings of what that might look like. And then we thought about, was the most important information easily accessible? So the things that people are going to use the most often or are going to be looking for on a message, is that upfront ready to go for someone to find? Um, are things confusing or overwhelming? If so, how can we make it less confusing and less overwhelming? Is there any information missing? And then, after we've like thought about these questions and have a solution, then we ask, is this potential improvement a good solution? And how can we make it better? And so we just keep iterating, keep doing this over and over as a process until it gets to a point where we're like happy with, um, happy with where we're at. So this is something we did in September and by we, like the people I worked with. So I like start, I was the person who like made that initial list of like, what is in our, what's in our current context menu and how can we group these things together? And then um, other designers on our team, Sol um, and Micah really helped like, let's take this, these ideas like this text and how do we make this into something visually pleasing? How do we make this into a beautiful menu? Um, so we work together as a team to make this happen. Um, Is it not there? One second. 
I'm missing a slide. Oh, there it is. Very strange. Okay. Um, so this is just a general idea of the direction that we wanted to go with this. And we have, I'll share a link. Um, and so in September, uh, we shared out a community post of our design, uh, our proposed design changes to the message context menu. And what this looked like is like the design team. Um, so that was Micah, Sol, and, and I. Um, as well as like Alex and um, people on the front end team. Like we shared this with other developers and other people um, involved uh, in Thunderbird to make sure like the direction we were going made sense and got feedback first internally. And then we shared this out externally when we were happy with what we had. Okay, great. Topic box. Yes. Um, the topic box post. And then there's this, um, this mock-up that's in the topic box post. Oops, that um, the mock-up is there's a lot of, you'd have to click to move through things, but our actual way that inside Thunderbird, you would not be clicking, you would just be hovering to move through the menu um, or using uh, keyboard actions to get through the menu. So this was our um, our like design uh that we we shared out to the community. So some of the key points are that there would be a top, um, some top actions, like we call them quick actions that people could get to. Um, and we wanted to like capture, okay, okay, good. Um, and then we also tried to like reduce the, the amount of like what's visible at the very start when you open it up and kind of group things together more. Um, so that it's not like a super long list. It's more like, okay, I know exactly what I want to do and I'll go to that uh, sub menu. So that was the idea behind this. Um, so like this is our current menu and this is in September where we were at in terms of how we were thinking about the design. And we, we've since are thinking more about how we'll make changes to this, but I just wanted to show this. Would it help to like, I can show later. Does it help to like go through the um the mockup, Heather, or is this good to just is this a good overview for right now? I think this is a good overview. Yeah, I mean, it really showcases how it went from this very long thing to a very efficient, concise thing. Okay. Okay. All right. So We got a lot of community feedback. It's like some of these, I'm going to go back. Okay, we received lots of great um, feedback from the community through our Thunderbird UX mailing list. Um, and I've like gone through that feedback. We've gone through that feedback and we're excited to incorporate that into what happens next uh, with the message context menu. So some of the like main feedback we've received, um, some of the existing options weren't included and in, as I said before, we're not removing any options. So if in the mock-up something is missing, um, that was like not not intentional. Um, and we will not, we're not taking things out. We want to keep things that people use, just leave it in. Um, and then there's some commonly used actions that people use, especially like the move and tags. And even though in this uh, mock-up, the idea was to kind of like put it inside mark or organize, that actually does not work as a good option. So we know that and we're going to um, improve upon that to make sure that move to and tag at the very least are quickly, you're able to see them at the top level. Um, and then other, other more feedback, um, people, as they were going through the mock-up, there were a lot of, there was a lot of clicking and they were like, I don't wanna click through the menu. Um, our menu is not uh, a clicking menu. It's through hover that you move through uh, the menu, but it's just like our the way we have uh, show like what the design looks like, the uh, program we were using, the only way we could show that was through clicks. Um, so that was confusing, but um, you can navigate the menu through hover. And if you're using a keyboard, the up and down keys let you move through options. And if you want to open a sub menu, you can use left and right. And then we also realized, okay, out of that, some of those top level things that people want are like 
hidden deeper than people would like, let's think about how we can move those up. So we're also gonna consider that. And then the icons used in the um, in these top actions could be confusing for people or they don't like know what they are. So we wanna make sure that the icons we're using are very clear, um, it makes sense to users, as well as uh, at the very least at a tool tip so people know like this is mark something as spam, this is delete, this is reply. Um, make it clear what these are. So that was also the feedback that there needs to be some text-based menu option or some way to make it clear what those things are just so people are like, I don't know what this icon means. We're gonna make sure that we make that as clear as we can. And we also have like received, I know this is a lot of information, but we will have time for questions um, and I'm almost done. Uh, we also received some like bigger, bigger feedback that's going to take more time to think through. So um, a really big one is that people want to allow customization of the quick actions, which is a really wonderful idea um, that like, people want to use the message context menu in the way that makes sense for them. And we got a lot of great ideas about how that could work. And thinking about that, um, how to customize quick actions would be something for the future. Um, and it would be something that we want to like get community feedback on and figure out how that would work. Um, so it's not planned for right now that we'll, we would do that, but by going in the direction that we want to go where we have this top, um, the top bar that shows those icons, there's the possibility in the future to make that customized, which is exciting, an exciting possibility. Um, and then we have a lot of add-on developers who do a lot to make Thunderbird work great for the community. And one of the things that they've requested is being able to hook in directly to reply and forward actions. So that's something that would require more discussion and figuring out how that would work technically. Um, but it's it's something that we like here and that we um, have uh, made sure to say like pull that out as like that's an important thing to consider for the future. And then... Okay. <laughs> and so next steps for all of this is we want to take the feedback we received today and all the feedback we received so far and refine this further um, so that the message context menu is something that um, people are excited about using, that it works for them. Um, so I talked about those design questions that we asked before that you just kind of like circle, like, does this meet our needs? And then how can we make it better? So we'll, we'll do that until we get to a point again where we're like, we're happy with this. Um, and then after we're like happy with what that design looks like, we'll scope out the work, figure out like what the timeline is and, and, um, and get going with development. And as I said before, like one of our community developers already started working on a patch for this. So there's actually a possible, like we can like look and see like how, how is this, how does this currently look based on what design we had going? How does this feel? How does this work? Um, so having that is really helpful. So we're, we're really excited about the development on this and, and moving it forward. I think that's it. Yeah. <laughs> that's it for my presentation. Wow. That's awesome. Um, did you touch on like how customizable? I did see some like questions about like, oh, I want to customize all the things. What's in scope and out of scope there? Um, as of now, customizing the quick actions is out of scope. Um, it's something we want to consider for the future. Um, and then customizing the menu, we have a space um, that we plan to include at the bottom for add-ons um, to uh, to add their actions at the bottom of the menu. Um, and out of scope is like actions, um, add-on actions that would be part of like the main menu items. We haven't scoped that yet. Yeah, okay. Um, we, we had a question in the chat during uh, the presentation and Micah answered this in chat, but I'm just gonna kind of recap it all. Um, and then see if Elizabeth, if you have anything to add. Uh, Alexander asked if we could share the design system or the UX source files to the community. And uh, Micah's response to that is um, right now our source design files are kind of a mess. 
as we use the same files for just about everything. But we're planning on cleaning these up, organizing them, and figuring out the best way to share these files with the community. And um, there will also be uh, a lot of design documentation at design.thunderbird.net. I'm going to put that in the chat too. It's not, it's not really, you know, it's not really there quite yet, but uh, it's it's in the process of being worked on. And if you guys have anything to add to that, feel free. Yeah, I, I think that makes a lot of sense. We'll have to come up with uh, an acronym for that, like we do with all of our. Yes, own. yes. Right. <laughs> so DTN. DTN, DTN and two. Sumo and, yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so Elizabeth, I know that you kind of um, have been really involved a lot in in the in the context menu changes, and I think driving a lot of that. Um, would you say that your role has been kind of the lead of that effort? I think so up to the point where we like, up, I guess like up till now, but now we, we recently hired like, um, like there's like project managers on our team now, um, which is absolutely wonderful so that um, we can like, they can like organize the work. So I don't know what my like future role will be, but it was definitely to help us to get to this point, um, leading that effort, yes. Yeah. Uh, I... Oh, sorry, Heather. Go ahead. No, 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 no. Go ahead. Was there got a question, question from from Danny in the chat? Uh, is there or will there be a preference in about config that we can flip to follow the implementation and dog food it real time in daily? Do you want me to read that again? Okay. No. Oh, <laughs> oh that oh. made sense to me. Oh, okay. We haven't. I don't think we've decided yet. Some some things we hide behind a preference and some things we don't really need to do that. Um, so I don't know yet as of now, but a lot of this is just visual changes. So most likely it would just be in daily as we update it. Um, it's not there yet, but okay. um, it would just be available. I think that's right. Please, if others, yeah, feel free to correct me. Yeah, that's exciting. Um, I think that's all the questions I have in chat. So okay, thanks for back watching to you. those. Yeah, by the way, Jason. Yeah. Well, Keep them Jason, coming. I think there was more. one about your sartorial choices. Say what? <laughs> there was one about your T-shirt. I think. Oh, old Thunderbird logo. Oh, wait, no, no, no. That's no, yeah. Man. No wait. It's a question about someone's T-shirt. Oh, it's it's for Kevin about a uh, cheap trick T-shirt. <laughs> oh goodness. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I just saw it. That would be me. <laughs> it's, kind of, it's just good old fashioned cheap trick. And, yes. and a cat. And a cat. Yeah. Cheap trick and, <laughs> and a cat. It's <laughs> mm, great. Cats always make a, a, their entrance on these. And that's lovely. She loves them <laughs> home. And Heather, it's just good. as you said that, one of your cats walked by in the background. I had to like Perfect stop them from walking right in front. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah uh i guess another question elizabeth kind of high level easy question i know you mentioned like a list of names there that were involved in the design process like how, how many others were there that were involved in the design uh very heavily soul and micah who are in the chat yes they're here um and and then we have like um like alex is a, like responsible for our team uh so he's like approving things and making sure it all is good to go um and then we also have uh i think there's at least three other developers involved with the front end who at least got to see it and like give us feedback um so <laughs> my math is not mathing at the moment no, 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 um, that's but good, yeah that's the good. multiple people were involved in those yeah. you're, you're talking about um community contributors right uh one of the like so richard? we have community yeah community yeah. contribute richard and then we have uh two other front-end developers who would have looked at it and said like oh this is looking good or oh, like okay. this is what i would improve um so there is that and then the four designers <laughs> so uh seven of us yeah yeah the uh, that message context menu thread that you posted on Topic Box got a lot of responses. Um, I think I counted like forty yesterday. <laughs> it was very a uh, very hot topic. So um, I'm I, I think a lot of people are excited to to see this work. 
I just have to say I was surprised to see the proportion of responses compared to uh, the cards view post from December or November. Yeah, like I expected that one to be a lot more, maybe even divisive, more heated, more discussion there. But um, it was interesting to see this, this topic really blow up. Yeah. Yeah. It's always exciting to see that. I um, think oh, I was just going to say, I think people use it often. So it's like important that it work well. And they were, they had a lot of great feedback to share. So, yeah. And it currently yeah. does not. It does not what? Work well. Just yeah, that, it's, it's that's very the reason overwhelming. It blew up. <laughs> but that's one of the things that we wanted to uh, work for sure, uh, to not longer make it overwhelming, to make it easy to find what people need to find. So like by grouping items and yeah, like uh, Mike is saying, shout out to Richard who goes by Peg Love because he has been just a rock to us. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's awesome. We love community contributions that help lay the foundations for cool things. Um, Elizabeth, I know you work on and care a lot about accessibility as well. So one of my first questions was, um, how does this improve accessibility in your opinion? I think one of the ways this improves accessibility is in the same way that if someone's looking at this and they're like visually overwhelmed by all the options, if you're navigating this by keyboard and you're using a screen reader, um, not having all the things available all at once and having to like hear each of those options is definitely um, an improvement because you can get quickly, a lot more quickly to the thing you're trying to find. Um, so that's that's one of the ways that it's improvement. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I wonder how that would work if you were to display the screen, uh, the the menu, and the screen reader is going through it, and then you, but before it's done, you hover over something, would it immediately start listing off the options in the submenu as well? Yes, that's how it works. Yes. Cool. Yeah. I think that's that's awesome. Um, how do you know when you're done with the? design development. I mean, you mentioned rinse and repeat. How do we not get stuck in a forever loop? At some point, oh, oh somebody want to say something. Sorry, I just it just reminded me of something I hear in the music community. A, a song is never finished, it's just published. And I think that, I feel like software works the same way. Like we, it's never finished, really. It's never done, it's just given to the community, to users, to, you know, to use and to give feedback on and improve. And then it's just, it's that loop. That's just my take as a non-developer. I would say as a designer, uh, usually it's really funny how we work. Uh, we usually start with Micah and me just like exploring ideas, experimenting things fighting over very minimal items. And then once we both have a good gut feeling of it, we bring it to Elizabeth who like help us reorganize it and keeping track with like the uh, pain points that we had. And once we have a uh, design we want and like we are sure that the pain points are being taken care of, we just bring them to Alex and to the rest of the community to be able to get more feedback and work on those items uh, in case we missed anything, just to, just to ensure that we are having, you know, covering all our bases. Yeah, that, that's that's a good point. Um, very cool. So this is going to be in the next ESR, right? That's coming out this summer. I think that's the plan, but we yeah. haven't. It hasn't been scoped yet. But I, gotcha. especially since Ping Lab like has like has a patch out, I'm like, oh, I'm excited. Um, so this, I I don't. Yeah, I, I, I'm I, not plan. the person who... <laughs> yeah, that's fair. No, no, that's fine. That's fine. I mean, I think that that makes sense, right? We're not always going to have all the answers, but we can say, well, we're planning on this unless something, you know, blocks it from happening, which makes, you know, that, that's how life is. <laughs> um, I know you mentioned the that there was a lot of community feedback in that very long topic box post, what would you say some of the main 
requests or concerns were um, that you heard about? I tried to pull them out in the presentation, but I think like the, the big ones were just that the things that people use every day, it was nested too deep. So just pulling things back up to the top. Um, I think that's like, that was like the, the biggest concern, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I know that you had mentioned like the icons at the very top, like reply to and the delete button, and you wanted to make um, that, you know, more clear to what those icons stand for. So I suppose there's going to be like a hover ability when you hover over something, it'll say, oh, this means delete or what it moved to trash or something. Yes. And if someone's using a keyboard or a screen reader, they'd be able to like hear what that we have. We definitely try to include in buttons, like what, a, like a text item that like corresponds to what it is. Yeah. Yeah. That makes, that makes sense. Um, there's a question in the chat. There's a couple of questions. One's kind of off topic, um, uh, that maybe we can save like to, for the end. Um, but a recent question is, um, Todd said, I hadn't noticed until now that the context menu for message body is different from that from the message list. Will the new design influence the message list context menu? So we wanted to start with the, just like for a message, what is the, um, what does the menu look like? This expands to the message list, but there's like specific things that we like specific cases that we would need to like design and account for. Um, but it's all using the same base. Uh, so if we're making a change to um, the one that affects like a message, it's going to impact the message list. But we do know there's special cases in there that then would be, <laughs> we would get to after we start with this first iteration. Yeah, that makes sense. And I imagine that the exercise of updating the message context menu itself is going to inspire some ideas when it comes to the message list. Is that, is a, like an overhaul of the message list context menu gonna happen down the line? as well i'm like am i am i getting this right for the person who asks this question todd like is when you're saying um message list context menu do you mean like the like if you click on multiple messages and you open up the context menu or is there some other context menu that you're referring to just want to make sure it's clear Yeah, he says that's it. I'm assuming the multiple multiple message highlights. Okay, yeah. yeah. And that's the it's using the same it's using that same menu. It's just that there's certain options when you have multiple um multiple messages selected that might not be available, like things related to threads and things like that, that might not be available if you're just looking at one message. Uh so yeah, there'd be plans to make sure it's all in line and um and it, it makes sense, but it would be <laughs> first we're starting with this with one context of a single message and then moving on to what this looks like in context of the message list. Very cool. So if people are just learning about this, how would you and, and they have, you know, thoughts and ideas and maybe want to contribute, like how would you say uh, community members should engage? to provide feedback or volunteer to help out with the message context menu changes or design in general? I'm not sure how to answer that question. So maybe I do know that like the topic box uh, discussion that we already have uh, yeah. as part of uh, Thunderbird UX, the mailing list, that mm -hmm. would be a good place to add uh, yeah. more feedback. But then if there's like more things in the future, or if we like kind of close out that discussion, I'm not sure what the so maybe someone I, else knows. I think you're right. Like, I mean, yeah, that's what I would say. If you have like opinions about this topic, go reply to that thread and consider joining the UI UX um, topic box list. And maybe while you're there, browse the top topic box list. I think other. I think things. Micah, Micah's got some feedback on that. I think. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I was just gonna say there is uh the the 
UI UX topic box mailing list, but there's also the matrix channel for the UI UX. Um, Ooh, so if you want to just, if you've not got something maybe necessarily fully email proposal ready and you just need to chat, uh, I hang out there a lot. <laughs> so at least, but um, gonna, I know that several of us hang out that. there. Oh, What's that? I'll get a link in the chat for that. For that oh, okay, cool. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Cool. Thanks. And Elizabeth posted a, a, a link again to the uh, the thread that's ongoing. And um, well, it's slowed down, but still, still there. You can still reply to it in topic box. Um, so um, I think I asked this of Micah with the cards view, but the question still stands. Um, how, Elizabeth, how do you think that existing members could help out best on on this? I, 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 we, I, I really love feedback. We really love feedback because knowing that something that it works well or doesn't work well really, really matters. And like knowing how people use it because um, how we think like something works um, versus like, okay, actually this thing's really important. Please don't forget about this. Like knowing that it's helpful because then we have like more, more voices um so yeah just sharing feedback and then when it when it gets out there testing it and telling us like hey like i i use this and i really like this um or like i used it and there's this thing that's like this missing or that i um i don't like as much or like yeah we'll, we'll, <laughs> and we can't like we can't change everything so sometimes people might really uh like there might be somebody who's like, I really dislike this thing, but then the larger community is like happy with it. So we can't change everything, um, but we will try our best to uh, to improve things so that it, it works best for the whole. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And once it is available to test in like daily, we can, you know, shout it out from the rooftops like, hey, everybody go, go try this out. Um, I know I look forward to it. Whenever I right click on a message, I get like a little bit of anxiety. It's like, oh my God, it's a huge. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm excited about this change and, um, all of the, the design changes that have been recent and are to come. What's up, Micah? I'll add about testing daily that, uh, we would love to see more people testing daily for more than just does it work or not? Because we do add a lot of design things there first. And the great thing about daily is that usually they are not the finished form um, or you know, like nothing's ever truly the finished form, but you can stop us before we get way too far in this <laughs> and, and we can maybe save a little work on getting through if you have some good feedback, because like, like Elizabeth said, we don't know exactly how you use this. We're, we're just, we can tell you how we use it. We can tell you how the people who have given feedback use it. But we, uh, I think for instance, we had um, earlier, I can't remember what we, what the particular project was, but we had um, some blind community members that were really trying to help us figure out how screen readers worked and uh, uh, like some things that we weren't doing quite right with screen readers. And that was very valuable feedback, at least for me, because I can turn on a screen reader and I can try it out, but I don't use it every day. So that's not, I don't know what's the best experience for that. Right. And so testing these things in daily before they make it out into the, to the stable is the best way to catch things early and get things, uh, give the feedback you want where it's the most useful, I guess, <laughs> but feedback is always useful. So even if it makes it into stable and and that's where you notice it still give us a still definitely tell us what you think but um i'm saying it might it might help us correct course faster if you're testing daily um and i will also caveat that with it is daily though so please don't use it as your um daily driver <laughs> as your well yeah as your daily <laughs> like don't expect it to be super stable <laughs> right what's up jason so I just had kind of a related question to daily and something that maybe pe people here could benefit from when, when someone decides to test daily are, you know, are there certain points 
in development where the Thunderbird team might communicate to daily users, like we really do want you to look for this type of behavior or check out this element of Thunderbird daily because that's what we're actively trying to get feedback on right now. Does that kind of does that kind of communication happen, like on Topic Box or you know in in developer channels on Matrix, or is it just kind of normally used daily and give us feedback? Um, I would say that I don't know if it's like as direct as that, but usually mm -hmm. when we do announce like a new feature or something through the UX mailing list or whatever, it comes usually pretty quick into daily after that. Okay. Because about the time that we put it up into the UX mailing list is about the time we are just about ready to start coding it. We we usually think it through, put it up on the mailing list, get the feedback, then go back to some iterations and then start coding. So if we aren't started coding already and correcting course as we get feedback. Um, so if you see something pop up in the mailing lists, look for that feature in in, in the coming, you know, yeah. weeks, okay. months, whatever, uh, cool. and really give that a try because, um, yeah, that's it's probably helpful. when we're going to start putting it in there. Okay. <laughs> to add to Thanks. what Mike is saying, I would also say that if there's a topic uh, or feature that we're trying to bring or playing with um, and we bring it to Topic Box and you by any chance also use a different kind of email provider, sometimes on your phone or sometimes on different things, uh, and you have either pain points with it or you know, like you really like something else, like we can also discuss that as like, if we are trying to implement something that we haven't discovered just yet, the pain points of it as our users have not gone through it, it would be good for us to uh, fix on that and be better than the others. <laughs> also like something something that I have noticed within, um, within many different communities is, you know, you'll be doing, you'll be testing something or you'll just notice something that maybe sticks out or that's a, a, a pain point that you feel at first you feel like I should really, I should, maybe I should write to the team or I should post something about this. And then you think, I'm sure someone else did already. Don't assume that someone else did. Just throw your feedback out there and let us know. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I think, I think Danny made a good point. Like we could do a better job of, I guess, informing people on what to look for in daily changes. Like if they're not on the, UI UX topics topic box list and then they you know start daily they might not know to look for the context menu changes um but I know yeah. Wayne does a, a good job of trying to like update bugs and stuff um yeah and and we are trying to just a little bit of a behind the scenes uh our community team we are trying to like improve that pipeline of um new features that are coming out to the users in various methods so that it reaches a broad audience and people feel more informed of like what to look for and what to get excited about. Yeah, basically more frequent communication and more transparent communication. Yeah, that's across right. the board. So across the board, we were having meetings about that this this week ongoing. That's right. So it's, it's good stuff. Yeah, we're, we're trying to, you know, figure out what what the best way to do that is. But yeah. Um, Either. We're still using um, Baxilla for bug reports mainly, right? Yeah. Because uh, like there was a recent drive to move a lot of communication to what was it, Mozilla Connect, but that's more like for features, right? Exactly. It's, yeah. And, that's and right. brainstorming and, ideas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, um, and not everybody is you know um, familiar with using Bugzilla, so. Um, we really want to keep Bugzilla for like if there is a bug or something like that. Yeah, I've I've been using Bugzilla for a long time. I think the main problem it has right now that um there are too many bugs, and it's limited to like how much is it? like was it five hundred or five thousand? I I don't remember. Like there is a limit on how many bugs it can show you. I think it's five hundred. But... Yeah. That I think that's a big problem. There's um, also another way to do that. Like usually as you start typing on a title, like it will also pop up similar or related bugs. So sometimes when we are also uh, tagging our own bugs, we just can check with that if someone already from our team has plugged it. So at least that kind of helps a little bit. 
Yeah, definitely. And and I, I wanted to point out that like there's been internally a um a push to triage more bugs too. Um and there's been a whole section added to developer.thunderbird.net to try and help guide people on how to do that if they are interested in volunteering some bug triage efforts too. Um Right, Danny points out duplicates are pretty cheap, so don't worry about accidentally filing one. Um, that, that's that's a good point. Um, you're right, Alex. There's not um, uh, the menu changes yet in daily, um, so I I definitely had that wrong at the beginning, but uh, Elizabeth corrected corrected me, and, and we hope to see that in daily, you know, soon. But no promises on a specific date or anything. Um, that's right. That's a good point, Elizabeth. There are monthly like beta releases that include all the daily features from the last month. And, um, that's probably a really good place to test as well. Um, and it gets, it does get updates pretty regularly. Um, so I can, I feel like most of the time beta is a good enough, it's stable enough to be a daily driver and it's a good place to suss out bugs um, before it makes it into the stable. You can't go back though. You can't go back from, from beta to ESR. You just can't do it. That I is... tried that recently and I was like, oh, mm, yeah, I'm yeah. going to stay on beta. Uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> um, at my last job, I, I was using uh, Thunderbird Nightly for to test something. And then I realized I couldn't go back. And so I was just on, I was just using daily as a daily driver for a while. And I, but I knew that, you know, if I found bugs, like just accept it, like it's okay. <laughs> it was good enough, honestly. Although, I mean, now I do mostly sit on stable. <laughs> There's a way to like have multiple installations, but I think that's like might be a more advanced thing. So, like, I have like 115, and then I have beta, and then I have daily, and then I have my like development. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> like how I did too. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. But it's, add 102 it's, to the list because we still have to check some stuff there. Um. Yeah. Do you guys just uh run like like download the tarball and then run the binary directly, or do you actually install it in parallel? I install in parallel. So when it asks, like, do you want to? It'll ask and say, hey, there's. You already have another installation of Thunderbird. Do you want to install that over this? And I'll say no, and then I'll just name it something else so that yeah. they like are just different applications. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, I know with Firefox you can run Firefox with different profiles, so maybe it's using some of that underlying shared code. <laughs> I have I have a daily installed that I run as my daily because I I don't know. I guess I'm. I, I just don't follow my own advice. I do have stable installed. <laughs> I just don't open it. Um, but I, then I have a separate profile I use for development because I don't really want to break oh. my <laughs> my actual email. I want that to actually come through most of the time. Yeah, it's just kind of amazing to me how much how much cleaner and just how much visually more attractive that beta is than ESR at any given time. It's it kind of it like that's what I meant when when you go back to ESR from daily or beta, it really shows you that the pace of development is actually a lot faster than I think most people think it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Did uh did we miss any questions in the chat? I think. Uh, I think we got them all. There was uh, one like uh, the development um, status of chat. And I think Danny answered that with kind of pointing to the right areas. Okay, thanks Danny. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah I don't know if, if this is getting us off track, but there were, I read that uh, Thunderbird is looking forward to um, publish uh, Thunderbird in a monthly release cycle. Um, wouldn't that be very close to um, running daily? <laughs> Almost like being on daily, you know? Is that 
Well, it where would be, will like be the difference? Beta, right? Uh, yeah, it's like okay, it's beta, beta. Much closer to much closer to running beta. Yeah. 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 Um, I I I don't have like a specific date when we will start that, but I know that's something that we are looking to do. I feel like we don't have the right people in here to. Yeah. yeah. To very knowledgeably answer the that. The monthly releases will be just like the Firefox monthly releases. Right. You'll get features faster. Mm -hmm. Long term features will land, will shut off, be shut off with a pref, like they do in nightly in beta. But they will be in there and soaking as opposed to the ESR <laughs> nightmare that we have where the code gets released to two, 2 million, 20 million users once a year. So it will be painful to transition, but it's 100% worth it from a support point of view. I think from a user point of view, it will not be like running nightly. It will be right, oh. like running a much more polished version of beta. Uh -huh. It will be awesome, but it will be painful. <laughs> first, I was gonna say, I think that the paid. beta, I think that the difference between the beta and the monthly releases is that we kind of shove everything that is mostly done into beta and we would probably not do that for for yeah. the actual monthly releases like i think we would be holding back uh things that aren't quite a, that are potentially broken whereas beta yeah. is much more of a test environment <laughs> uh, the yeah. current beta is more like a test environment yeah yeah so things will have to change there or not have to but will yeah. just simply yeah. will okay. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, it would be like a yeah, I, I see it. I, what I see is like, or uh, what I fear as a user, it's like um, there will be more bugs, but uh, the bugs will be fixed faster. Um, that's that's what I expect. There will be more bugs initially, but over time there will be less bugs because the code will get to real users sooner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the Firefox experience, and uh, I think that will be the same for us. Yeah, as of right now, it's kind of like when we ship one thing a year, or basically our new features only once a year, we end up getting a massive backlog of bugs, like right after release that we have to figure out because no one's seen this feature yet, and it probably got used in a way that wasn't tested in beta or something. Uh, when you go out to that many users, it's bound to find some edge cases, and uh, this allows us to get more features in faster and also fix them faster because if we come up with a feature that we only release once a year and then we we really need to fix it uh and something changes under the hood we can't it's it's very difficult to backport <laughs> um yeah uh, i just want to point out real quick and maybe micah this is to you uh in the chat alex is pointing out that design.thunderbird.net doesn't have any ui components to use so he wants to make his own design system and i know that you had said that that there's like some improvements to design.thunderbird.net that are coming um can you talk a little bit about that i can um yes right now design.thunderbird.net is basically empty that's <laughs> that's something I, I, I've been uh, I would I would like to rectify. We just have to um, right now with uh, the supernova release, we are in kind of a state of I wouldn't say flux, but we are working through what our design what our full design system looks like, what it uh, what it, that entails, and trying to figure out the best way to. Um, make that i guess pull that out into reusable components and we are doing some work with like um i know martin's been doing a lot of work with storyboard i think which is um storybook basically live code design system and uh there would also be a lot of uh, we we also need to write a lot more like you know, the non-visual design stuff like user experience uh, documentation and um, kind of like when to use things and where and why. And so, and the tone of like, so when you're writing new content and and things like that. So we are aware that the design.thunderbird.net has 
basically nothing on it right now, but that is something we we are going to fix whenever things get a little more nailed down. Right now, we we think something's going to work one way, we get it out in the real world, and then it uh, it needs to change a little bit. And before we really codify that, we kind of need to figure it all out. That um, makes a lot of sense. And to add to that, like, uh, we're just at the moment, like three designers. So like, we're usually signing and uh, keeping track of this. It's definitely going to become one of our priorities at some point. And to, in order to do that, uh, we're also slowly trying to build uh, better connections with the other UX developers um, at Mozilla. So they can also guide us and help us to have good content as well, because we can design, but personally writing is not for me. So it's good to be able to communicate, hey, this is an icon, but this is how you use it, or, or this is where it's meant to be and like all this use for it. So uh, yeah, we're slowly talking to some UX developers over there or UX designers as well. So things are coming, things are happening. <laughs> Yeah, I think that sounds really promising. So Alex, instead of setting up your own design system that doesn't match Thunderbird, maybe you want to join the topics bo topic box list and, and see how you can participate and help out with that effort when it's like really getting underway. Um, yeah. Are there any more questions regarding the message context menu before we kind of call it or or questions about Thunderbird in general? Yeah, Monica. I just had a thing that I think that the, uh, I don't know who listened to the recent um, interview with Brian on, oh, Jason, what was it, oh, it on? Tech it was, over uh, tea. Tech, tech, yeah, tech, tech over yes, tech over tea. And he was talking about how one of the things he wants to do is have people use Thunderbird less and not use our product as much. And I think that this kind of reducing the cognitive load, because I I know I can get like just overwhelmed super easy. And like, yeah, things like a menu and it's like, oh, I'm not gonna take action with this message because this is just too much for my brain at the moment. Whereas it's just like, oh yeah, I wanna do that and then and then having that flow that guides you through it instead of just this like wall of text. Whoa. Sorry. Was that? I was actually trying to pull up the, the exact clip for- Oh, that oh, was oh, Ryan's that was you. <laughs> It was like, who's and talking? Here it is. Yeah. It's actually quite good. It's part of a larger interview that Ryan did. It's a, um, he broke it into a bunch of clips which are on his channel. So, uh, but that's like a six minute six minute clip that's really really a great listen yeah good good yeah. call i'm glad he broke things up into clips so you don't have to watch a whole two hour plus i know we should do the same <laughs> thing with office find... hours huh yeah maybe yeah. 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 That. Yeah. i'm gonna do that yeah if i can, can find the right the wish list and, yeah. and see how that falls with the priorities yeah. Um, yeah so i guess i just really wanted to say elizabeth that it's awesome that kind of to see how what you're doing here fits with kind of Ryan's, you know, like him sharing like the big picture goals and how it's all working together. So I just wanted to say that's a really good job. Yeah, yeah, it's a good tie-in. Thanks, Elizabeth, for like your time and, and yeah. like talking about the cool things that you're working on. <laughs> Thank you. I've just, this has been a joy to talk with people and yeah, to be a part of this. And thanks everybody for being here and giving us your time too. It's, it's really yeah. appreciated. Yeah, and all the thoughtful questions and, and just being part of our community. That's, that's yeah. great to see you all. Um, so, yeah. Next month, I think, we've got yeah. to be here again next month. We don't know that's exactly right. when or what, but we. But hey, but we have 29 days next month. So <laughs> we should do it on Leap Day. Leap and day after, is, after yeah, Faustum, we will, figure, we will figure that out. That's right. So Faustum is a pretty big conference. It's starting next week and several of us are going. So um, we're all kind of preoccupied with that. So that we will figure <laughs> out what the next office hours is about and day and time and everything. Communicate that out, but definitely after Faustum. I, I vote for a leap day. Yeah, I, I would like love to go to the uh, Faustum talks that I know Alex is going to be given and like Katie mm -hmm. will also be given. Like, oh my God, that will be lovely if we can have like some post about it because I am excited. Yeah. 
We will have and, posts about it. We'll we'll be sharing out like where to where to stream ooh. them and and everything. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, watch our Mastodon and such for for that mm -hmm. information. But after Fostim, we'll do probably like a a Fostim recap blog post as well to share out with the world. So cool. Well, thanks for running the show, Heather. Yeah, thanks everybody. Thank for you. Here. As always, it's fun. Nice to see everybody. Uh, have Thank a good rest. You. Oh, we of have one more. Can we do it? Oh, is there oh, already a topic is? for the next uh, for the next community hours? We're Not thinking we about. Have... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. We Boston? have some ideas. We have some ideas. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but yeah, we need to reach out to some key guests and see if they'll be available, if they'd be interested, that kind of thing. We could just do a FOSTEM recap for those of us who are there and don't want to watch the videos. <laughs> we well, could, honestly we could do a Boston recap for people who were there and couldn't get into the room so oh that too yeah don't let topics stand in the way from keeping this going we won't we won't yeah we won't. no we have we nothing to Good if point. we have nothing planned we will just round up everybody and just have a free for all so Definitely. this this will be a monthly thing that's something that I'm I'm personally ensuring that we stick to so and, yeah, you know, ideally, maybe we go beyond monthly if we have enough, enough things to talk about, enough interest. So, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I definitely like kind of the last Thursday ish of the month or last week of the month. So I think targeting a leap day would would be good. I think we want to yeah. do I think we want to do the last Wednesday of every okay. month so we can get Wayne in here. Mm -hmm. Thursdays, he can't be with yes. us on Thursday today. So, yeah, but. Yeah, we'll, right, we'll let right. everybody know. I have a question for everybody still in the room. Um, how do you feel about when we are notifying you about the next office hours? Are we giving you enough oh, time? Question. Like, yeah. are we giving you enough notice to plan to be here? Is it happening too early? Is it happening too late? Mm. Maybe there's Somehow. no feedback on that, but but let me know. How? Yeah. somehow it has managed to get to me the last couple months and if i tried to think off the top of my head exactly which avenue i saw it in i couldn't tell you okay that tells me that i'm thinking <laughs> i've seen a lot of different links here for a lot of different places that are thunderbird related and mastodon and this and that and little consolidation if there's if there's one stream somewhere that would be really cool i can point to all the other ones but yeah, that's that's actually really good feedback because we want to avoid fatiguing mm -hmm. you with, you know, with sp basically spamming you. We don't want to be spamming you with links and information, but we're trying I'm to pretty sure out. it was the blog and Feedly that got my attention, but I don't honestly mm -hmm. remember. Sweet. Okay. Well, okay. evidently, this is hilarious because my husband and I have like this hive brain, but we also did put a link. We are trying to use some of our public facing calendars more. So we are, uh, we have added this to the Thunderbird release and event calendar, and we're going to put those links in all of the blog posts. So if uh -huh. you subscribe to this, then you will get that in your calendar to say, hey, this is when office hours will be. And then it will get populated with, you know, the info and how to join. So, yes. Yeah. And, and so we will put that in, a kind of make a point that whether it's on topic box, in the blog, we'll publicize that calendar more. Yeah. And if anybody's watching and has feedback on when you would like to see it, where you would like to be notified, let us know. Mm -hmm. And if you have questions going forward, if you think of something, maybe we don't have a topic assigned where it lines up or the bottom line is if you have a question for an office hour session, just send an email to office hours at thunderbird.net. Yes. And just we'll posted sure. it. <laughs> oh, thank you. Perfect. Perfect. Oh, wait, no. I, why did I do that? Uh, office hours at Roland. At Roland. <laughs> oh, Roland are in charge of this. Zoo. I got you. I got you. <laughs> oh, no. Don't worry, it won't go anywhere. Anything I see anymore. how that happened, though. I see how that happened. All right. <laughs> there we go. Thank you, everybody, there's, for there's being email. here. We really thanks appreciate Thanks a lot. You. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks again. See that you next fun. month. Heather, uh, Heather, Monica, let, or, well, I'll just, I'll talk to you guys on Matrix. <laughs>